Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and today it's time to install the water tank, the plumbing, the pump, the filter, everything I need to have drinking water inside my Jeep Gladiator. Last time I did the whole design of the setup, now it's time to really do it. So there's so many different pieces to this puzzle. I spent ages running around town yesterday getting everything that I need. Let's get stuck into it, no time to waste. So the first thing that I need to do is mount the tank. And as I'm going, I keep getting ahead of myself thinking about where am I gonna put the pump? Where am I gonna put the filter? How am I gonna do that? And I kind of get overwhelmed. There's so much to this thing to try and design and build. So instead, I'm just gonna take it one step at a time. I'll show you everything that I do and I'll talk through it as I'm going. Yesterday, I was running around town. I did manage to find some three-way splitters. So that means instead of having four ball valves, I'm just gonna have two of these contraptions. And you can see this is a bit of a Frankenstein of parts. Unfortunately, here in Australia, it feels like this project is falling halfway between real plumbing and kind of gardening hoses, and then maybe even like sprinkler setups. And getting all the different threaded attachments and how to connect hoses, it's not exactly clear how I should do it. And of course, I'm being really careful too. I wanna to make sure that everything is food grade or food safe. So food safe hose is easy to come by. As long as I use brass fittings, I'm okay. But I have to be careful not to just use like gardening hose stuff because that hose, who knows what that's rated for or even things for sprinklers. So it's been a bit of a challenge getting all the bits and pieces, but I think I've got everything that I need right now. And the basic idea is I'm gonna mount the tank here on this side. And I did see in the comments, someone asked, could I have two of them to share the load? Absolutely, if I needed that much water, I don't think that I do. And the reason I've chosen this side is because my whole kitchen is going to be on the other side now. Um, there's obviously the fridge and the weight of that, all of my food and all that kind of storage. Underneath the Jeep on that side will also be another fuel tank. That's quite heavy. So the goal is to try and balance things out a little bit. How do I put the water tank over there? It would be very crammed in beside the kitchen. I don't actually know if it would fit well. And I think there'd be too much weight on that side. So this is me balancing the weight by getting it on this side. So my first job right now is to figure out bracketry and how I'm actually gonna hold the tank in place. Last night, I started working on a bracket that's gonna go here at the front. I've also got to make one up for the back. I'll put some buffers on the side of it. I'm putting some rubber matting under the tank so that it actually rests on this rubber mat instead of resting directly on the bedline Jeep tub. So plenty to do. Let's get stuck right into it. Come along for the ride and I'll show you how it goes. All right, I've been at this for a few hours now and I just lost some GoPro footage there, but I'll give you an update on where I'm at and then I'll bring you along. I've been mostly working on just mounting the tank, making it bolt in and be solid. So I'll show you what that looks like. Here at the front, the tank actually has four threaded inserts that can take bolts. So I've made this right angle bracket here. It kind of fits around the tub a little bit. And I just drilled a hole in the tub of the Jeep straight down through the floor. Seems I'm getting less concerned about drilling holes in the tub. On the sides, the tank also has threaded inserts. And I've put these little spaces here with a little bit of cushioning on them. That'll touch the side of the tub just to help support the tank a bit. And then at the back here, I've got a vertical strap bolted in and this picks up a hole at the very back of the tub of the Jeep. The whole tank is nearly as long as the Jeep tub. It's nearly the full length. And then there's these two holes as well that I haven't picked up yet. And what I'll do with those, if I need to, I'll add a strap there. I have to make a right angle bracket, but I can actually do that later when the tank's already in. And so I'll worry about that later if I need to add it. And you might notice too, at the front here, what I've got is this piece of strapping running right up and over the tank. And the reason I've done that is because it gives me these bosses, I guess, as I'm calling them, which are actually just bolts that I've put through that strap. And the reason I've done that is so that I can mount everything like the pump, like the filter and all of that. I've decided that I'm gonna mount it all on top of the tank. There really wasn't anywhere else to put them. There was conceivably space down here between the wheel arch and the tank. There's maybe like this much space. 
and I might have fit them in there, but then running the hoses to them and that kind of thing was just going to be a real nightmare. So I've decided to put everything up on top. And the reason I've done it using those threaded uh, bolts or bosses as I'm calling them, is because now I can do this. I've got this piece of plywood that's gonna bolt on there. I'll use Nylux to hold that down. And now everything else bolts onto the plywood. And so what that means is I can actually assemble everything onto this plywood while the tank is already bolted into the Jeep. And so I'll assemble everything on here and I'll show you how it all lays out. And then when I'm happy with how it's all assembled, I can actually do most of the plumbing here while, even while the tank's in the Jeep, because the plywood will be here and I can work on the plywood. So I'll do that. And then when I'm ready, I basically just take the plywood over and bolt it on top of the tank with all of these components already bolted to the plywood. And let me just spin this one around. This is my basic layout. And so I had to draw this a couple of times on paper and I had to really think about it. If you're gonna do this kind of thing yourself, the easiest things to start with are that the outflow of the pump always goes to the in of the filter. You don't need any complicated tap or anything there. And actually I just saw the filter goes the other way around to make sure the flow is correct. But anyway, the out of the pump always goes to the filter. And then when it's coming out of the filter, you need choices, so it'll go into one of these. And then of course, the other way around, the inlet of the pump, and the inlet of the pump has a little a basket filter on it. This is by Sureflow, by the company that makes the pump. This is just to catch any real large items before they go through the pump, because if they go into the pump, it's gonna kill it for sure. But anyway, the inlet of the pump, which I've got here, needs to connect to one of my two-way taps as well to give me choices. So before you really even think too hard or too long, you kind of, you already know that that's true. So you can fiddle around and lay everything out and you can already see how my hoses are basically all gonna be in a straight line down the length of the tank. At the front here is where the tank has two kind of inlets and outlets. These two here that I've already attached hoses to, they're just threaded into the tank, it came that way. And I've just run both of them up and I've got them zip tied here just to keep them out of the way for now. I needed to attach these before I can put the tank in the Jeep. Once it's in there, this is very, very tight up against the front corner of the bed and there'd be no way to get that in. So essentially, one of these hoses, whether it's the inlet or the outlet, will go to one of the multi-taps and the other one will go to the other multi-tap. And then one of these is the suction fill and one of them is the outlet where I'm gonna have some sort of spray nozzle or you know, way to get the water out of the tank. So things are progressing really well. I'm happy with how it's going. Um, it's been a lot of head scratching. I'm not a fabricator by any stretch of the imagination. So making brackets and thinking about how to bolt things down it really makes me scratch my head and it makes me really slow down and think about what's the best way to do these things. And so basically now it's just a matter of assembling all of this where I want it on the actual plywood and screwing it all down. And as I go, I'm going to connect all the different hose bits together as well. You know, join the filter here to this tap, join this to the inlet, join this, of course, with a length of hose and with hose clamps on each end to make sure that it's all nice and tight and it doesn't come apart. So that's where I'm at, that's what I'm doing. Uh, and I should mention too, I assembled all of these things. Lots of these have threads on them. I've used um, plumber's tape or what do they call that, Teflon tape on all of those threads and I did them all up nice and tight. And of course, I'm not dealing with insanely high pressures here. The pump currently set to cut off at 55 PSI, um, but I'm really confident none of that is going to leak. It's not gonna be a problem. Um, and so it's a matter of assembling everything now. I'll get the tank bolted in. I can add the plywood piece later and then just do the final plumbing. Uh, and then what I'm thinking about is making some sort of shield on this side of it to keep it safe. My chairs are going to be here. This is kind of, you know, the overall gladiator bed. The swag will be rolling around. If the swag rolled on top of the pump, it might break something. So I think I'm gonna have a piece of plywood that goes vertical right up the side of the tank. It'll protect down low on the tank as well, so it couldn't get a hole in it. Nice big vertical piece of plywood and probably a top on it as well. And that I haven't fully thought through yet. I think it's just gonna be a matter of once it's in there and once I see what my options are, I'll just make it happen. So just gotta keep at it and keep putting it all together.
All right, you can see I've got everything laid out and everything attached to the board. I decided I'm just going to zip tie the two-way taps in place just to kind of stop them bouncing up and down. They're a little bit heavy. And so the next step now is to start actually plumbing everything together. And so I've got my food grade hose here and you can see this stuff is braided. So not only is it food grade, it's also rated to a really high pressure. What that means though, is that it's extremely hard to bend it or make it go around corners or even to push it on to the nipples that are on the end of all of my fittings here. So a quick little tip, if you're gonna work with this hose, I've got a kettle down here, I'm gonna boil water and dip the hose in the boiling water. And when you leave it in there for maybe 30 seconds, the hose gets extremely soft and pliable. So I'll be able to bend it a little bit, I'll be able to push it onto all those fittings, and then I'll do up the hose clamps before the hose is cooled down. So that way it'll be squished by the hose clamp and it'll stay that way squished as it cools down and hardens up again. So that should make the whole job easier and it should make sure that nothing's going to leak. So here we go, quick time lapse. Let's plumb this whole thing together. All right, so the moment of truth has come. We're gonna test this out. We figured we'd test it here to see if it leaks. Uh, and for this test, I'm just gonna use this hose for the suction and to pump water out again. And Dad, how old is your power supply? When was that thing made? 50 years ago. <laughs> it's an early, early train set power supply. So we've got our 12 volt power supply, but it only draws one amp, so it might not be enough to run the pump properly. And I'm just looking here on my connections. This is the inlet side to the pump. So I've got my suction hose is turned on. The other hose from the tank is turned off. It's gonna go through the pump, through the filter. And then when it comes out, I want it to go in the tank and I don't want it to come squirting out what will eventually be the outlet of all of this system. So I think we're good to go. Do you wanna turn it on? If dad turns it on, we can hear the pump and I can feel a bit of suction on this hose and I can make the pump load up. Let's see if it's enough suction to actually make the whole thing work. So it's gonna to have to suck it all the way up my coiled hose here, which is a fun science experiment. Here it goes, I can see it through the filter. It's coming now. Here it is out here, here it is going into the tank. And it's black, I think because of the carbon filter. Or maybe they're air bubbles. I think they're air bubbles. I'm gonna say that it's working. Yep, I can see it in the bottom of the tank and we're quickly running out of water here to use in our test. Stop. No, 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 we'll keep going until we've used up all of this water. So you can see on my curly hose here that I'm playing with, I've been experimenting making a hose to have on the outlet sprayer of this whole setup. So I'll get back to you on the results of that. And I'm guessing there must be air coming out my breather hose right now. Of course, the pump isn't putting out much pressure right now because it's only able to get one amp out of that power supply. Yeah, but it's pumping probably full head of water. Ah, oh, there was lots of air bubbles in the flow. Yeah. So, my trick now is I'm going to disconnect our suction inlet and connect it instead to where the outlet will eventually be, which is this one. And now I need to flip all of my hoses around so we're not suctioning out of a hose. We're actually going to bring water from the tank. And then on the outlet, we don't want it to go to the tank. We want it to come out of our hose, which will eventually have some kind of sprayer on the end. But for now, if you go for it, Dad, we should be getting running water out of our tank. And I think it's actually pulling air right now because the tank isn't level. Going to fill it up a bit. Only as long as it isn't going to fall over. <laughs> Getting... Oh, it's definitely working. Give me a little bit back of this so I can see the water. <laughs> and drop it. Oh, yeah. Give it a plug. Spilling half of it on the ground, of course. Wow. 
right, the time has come to actually install this whole monstrosity into the Jeep here. And I'm pretty sure my bracketry and everything that I planned for earlier is all just gonna line up. So I'm happy with the results of the leak down test. Um, I still do need to figure out the exact suction hose, the exact usage hose, and I'm gonna put a hose on the breather vent here. But I feel like those are all things that I can do once it's in place. Um, the wiring is super dead simple. I left myself wire here that's switched off my little power block and I do have to move my power block for the third time now. I think I have a solution here at the front of the tank but now I see these hoses. I wonder if they're going to get in the way. So <laughs> there's still a few things to figure out here but I'm going to climb up now and put it in see how it goes. So there we have it, the tank is bolted in. Uh, it's worked out exactly like I hoped it would. I just need to do up this bolt here at the front to really pull it down and then finish off lots of little loose edges. As you can see, this is a big project. This isn't something you're just gonna be able to knock out in a day or two. So I think very much worth it to have drinking water. Obviously you'll need to make your own choice. So stick with me, I'm gonna keep tackling all the little details and actually get this thing squared away. All right, everyone, the system is finally, well, finished, almost finished. Uh, it's in a state though where I need to show it to you because soon you won't be able to see it. But let's run through how it works. I'll show it in operation. I'm really happy with how it's come together. So I did a, just did a leak down test. Uh, I've got it about two thirds full. You can probably see where the water level's at there. And uh, it leaked one of my little hose clamps here leaked. So I heated up the hose again, cl uh, clamped it down tighter again and now there's no leaks in the whole system. So right now it's in use mode, which means the way that it's all set up and the way it's all plumbed and wired in is that it's ready to use the water that's in the tank. And so what I've got hanging here is my little spray nozzle. So I just unhook the spray nozzle, flip the switch here, which will turn the pump on. So turn the pump on, you'll hear it. And now when I pull the trigger on the spray nozzle, this is water being pumped out of the drinking water tank right now, spraying out of that nozzle. And you can see it makes quite a bit of pressure. It isn't fully continuous, but it's pretty close. And my spray nozzle here has a bunch of different modes that I could use. If I let go of the trigger, the pressure switch in the pump kicks off because it's built up to 55 PSI and the whole system just sits here ready and waiting to go. And again, I want to use the water. Now I just pull the trigger. The pump comes on. So right now in my Jeep Gladiator, I have on-demand drinking water just like that. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, a few things to note, I'm probably not going to leave the switch turned on like this because if something were to go wrong, if one of these hose clamps let go or due to all the vibrations, one of them started leaking, the pump is just gonna run continuously. It'll pump the tank dry and pump the whole bed here full of water. So more often than not, I'm gonna turn the switch off like I just did. Now when I pull the trigger, I basically am just relieving pressure from the system and that's it now, we're out of water and so nothing can go wrong. The whole system is not about to pump the tank dry and have it go anywhere. Now I'll just hang the sprayer up out of the way again. So that's the system in use. You can see that's pretty nice to have. And I just wanna to say too, this has taken way more effort than I remembered from last time. And three or four times I questioned myself. I said, is it worth it? Even my dad said, you know, you're making this way more complicated than it needs to be. But already I have those deep seated memories from my time in Africa. Having access to drinking water is so important. Five, six times a day, I'm gonna be back here filling up Nalgene's, cooking, whatever. I wanna be able to use water with no effort. So as far as I'm concerned, all flipping that switch and pulling the trigger, that's pretty close to no effort. So I'm really happy with that. So again, massive amount of effort. I think it's gonna be worth it. And I'll get back to you once I've been using it for a few months. And so I'll give you a quick overview while it's all here and while you can see everything before I cover it all up as I climb in the back here. Basically what I've got is this hose goes down into the tank and we follow it along. It comes into one of my splitters and it's obviously turned on because we're sucking water from the tank. We're not sucking water from the open end. Comes this way, goes through a little inline filter, goes through the pump, back along through the filter, 
and then we get to choose where does the water come out. Right now it's coming out of all of the blue hose, which is permanently routed up here and then goes onto my springy hose and out the spray nozzle versus the one that's closed right now would actually push water into the tank. So it's fairly simple and because it's laid out this way, it's actually really easy to see. These two over here dictate input, where is the water coming from? And these two over here dictate output, where is the water going to go when you flip the switch? And so in use mode, you can see how simple it is. In fill mode, so if I did want to fill this tank now, what I've decided to do is make the fill hose removable. And what it has there, this fitting is actually a really standard hose fitting in Australia. Lots of campsites are gonna have a garden hose lying around that'll just clip straight onto that. So I could just clip straight onto a hose and my pump will just pump in from that. Or what I'm gonna do is just carry this small section of hose. It's about two meters long. And it does mean that I have to clip this on, which I guess is a little less convenient than in my old Jeep, but an extra 30 seconds is not a big deal. So now my hose is clipped on. I need to select that I want water to come from that hose, so I'll turn it on. I don't want it to come from the tank, I'll turn it off. It goes all the way around the loop, and on the way out, I don't want it to go to my spray nozzle, I want it to come into the tank. And just like that, when I turn the pump on now, the pump is actually suctioning from the end of that hose that I just plugged in. And so this is now the suction, I can feel it suctioning on my finger. I drop it down into a bucket, or I connect it to a hose, or whatever water source I've got, and if I can make it cooperate and stay down low in the bucket, you might have just heard the pump load up. The pump is now, I can see water running out of the filter, coming through the clear hose, and you can actually see it bubbling here as it's pushing it into the tank. Just because of the way the inlets and outlets on this tank were, actually the fill and the drain are both at the bottom. And it doesn't really make any difference. So that's how I fill my tank. And it does have a little breather hose here, this little clear one. And I've just got it tucked up here so that when you're pumping water out, you're not gonna pressurize the tank or pumping it in. And when I'm filling the system, I'm going to make sure, I'm just wriggling this hose around to keep it underwater. I'm going to make sure when it's nearly full that I'll put my little breather hose outside the Jeep like this. And basically I'll just fill it up until it starts overflowing. That way I know that it's completely full. I'll flip all my switches around again and I'll use a little bit of water just to move around all the water in the system, get rid of anything that's sitting around, and then it's good to go in use mode with a completely full tank. So that's really it. That's the whole water tank system. Like I said, I'm really happy with how it came together. Of course, there is one more little thing that I need to do, and that is I need to protect it. Right now, I feel like if I slide a chair in here or something, there's a really good chance it's gonna slide along and gouge the tank, or the swag or whatever else I throw in the back, it's gonna roll over and it's gonna crush the pump or it's gonna land on all of this stuff. And this stuff's a little bit delicate, so I need to protect it, I need to keep it safe. So what I've done is I've made up a whole bunch of plywood sections that purpose built to protect it. I'm making a little box around it. And the way I see it working is that the piece that'll go on the side here, that'll be permanent and fingers crossed, I'll never take it off. There's absolutely no reason ever to do that. And it comes up to about here somewhere, then there'll be a piece on the top. And that piece will be very permanent, but I'll be able to take it off if I need to with about five screws. So it would take 10 minutes to get it off. And I would take it off, you know, if there was a leak or if something went wrong, or if I really needed to get into the pump or something like that. So it is removable, but hopefully never have to do that. And then on the front here, I've designed a little opening flap so that I can open that flap and reach in to connect my suction hose and mess with my taps to change it from use mode into fill mode. So that's the idea of all the different plywood sections. And also too, I need to mount my little electrical block to those plywood sections. And then the whole thing will be complete. And you're right, someone's gonna mention in the comments, is it a good idea to have the electrical block so close to the water tank? I mean, probably not, no. In an ideal world, my electrical block would be somewhere else. The other side, the kitchen's gonna be in the way, up higher, I don't have anywhere great to mount it. So in the end, this is a compromise, but I'm not too worried about it because all of the wires that come into this box, 
they all go through a fuse panel that's in the back of the Jeep right where my secondary battery is in my charge controller. So the water pump is on its own 10 amp fuse, the charging outlets are on their own 10 amp fuse, and even the light switch is on its own 5 amp fuse, my little light that I can turn on and off. So they all have independent fused circuits. Even if some water got in here, even if something shorted out, it's just gonna pop the fuse. And in fact, I already know it works because I already did that. When I was rewiring it, I cut off the positive and the negative at the same time. So my wire cutters obviously shorted out the positive and the negative. And yeah, one of my little 10 amp fuses just popped you know, in an instant. And all I had to do was go and replace that fuse and then everything was back to good. So if my fuses do start popping from time to time, that's gonna be a really good indicator that there's water in here or something else has gone wrong. And then I'll have to open this up and have a rethink about sealing it or what I'm gonna do about it. But it does have a really nice rubber seal on the door. This is designed to be an outdoor electrical wiring block. So I really am not too worried about it. But again, I'll give you an update and I'll let you know how it goes. And there we have it, water system is complete. I tell you what, I'm really happy with how that turned out. The marine varnish that I put on the plywood actually makes it look really nice in this kind of dark color. And uh, you can see at the front here, there's my whole electrical block. Turn the pump on, turn the pump off. Got my little light off to the left. Got charging here for high current devices like my laptop, uh, soldering iron, things like that. And of course, a couple of weatherproof USBs, always handy to have. So that's all here integrated. Uh, and then of course my little flap here opens up and then I can get into the heart of the system. So it's really easy for me to reach in here. I could plug in my fill hose. I could flip my little taps as I need to, to change it from use mode to fill mode. But certainly when it's in use mode, which it is right now, uh, I can just grab down the sprayer, turn the pump on and away I go. And of course it's all just hidden away in there. We just don't even know that that's under there. Turn the pump off again, because I've finished doing whatever I'm doing, and that's it. Water. So all of that is to say, that's it, water system finally complete. And I've got to say, even though it's only been finished for 20 minutes, already now, this Gladiator is starting to feel more like a house on wheels and less like just throwing stuff in the back and heading out. Because this system now is totally contained, totally hidden away, at the flip of a switch, I now have running drinking water, which to me is a huge feature of a house and one that I really like. So already now I've got that, I've got a kitchen, I'm about to have some storage, I've got solar panels, I've got a second battery system. Things are starting to look up. This vehicle is really coming together. So I hope this has been helpful. And as I said in the last video, I hope that this helps you design or think about a similar system in your vehicle. And if you have any questions about what I've done or why I've done it, please do leave a comment. I really will reply to it. I really will help you however I can because I am passionate about helping other people get out there and have adventures and design and build systems like this that are going to enable those adventures. So if the video has been helpful, do hit the thumbs up button, do subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to check out my Patreon as well, where you get behind the scenes access, you get early access, you get all kinds of information about what I'm working on long, long before I post it here on YouTube or on Instagram. So there's a few more things to go on the Jeep and I've been getting out on smaller trips and it's almost time to hit the road for real and start living out of this thing full time. So I hope you'll stick around. I hope you join me for the adventures. Stay safe out there. Maybe I'll bump into you on the road.